Hi guys, I'm Locutus, and welcome back to some more Master of Orion. Uh, this isn't going to be as long of a run as my own, this is actually going to be a fairly short video. Uh, he says, firing up Master of Orion, see you in four hours then, basically. No, no, uh, I am actually going to try and keep this short this time. Uh, Master of Orion has a habit of, like a lot of 4X games, but Moo and Civ are particularly bad for it of, you know, that, that particular knack of you, you start to play the game, it's like, oh, I'll just have a quick go. I'll play a few turns and surround my empire a little bit and, uh, you know, play a few turns just before bed. And then it's 3 a.m. all of a sudden, and you've got to get up for work in two hours, and badness occurs. Yep. So, Master of Orion, uh, we're not carrying on with the previous playthrough. You may have, if you've any of you watched that, uh, because the game has been updated since then. That was on the, the sort of first build of the early access builds. Uh, we're now on the second sort of major patch. They're doing, as I think it stands at the moment, they're planning on doing essentially one big content update and sort of general overhaul of the game a month during the early access period. I think they're planning to do that for four months. Uh, this being we're in the second month now. And at the end of that, the game will go into open release. So what has been added in this patch? Uh, well, a few things have been added. Let's have a look. So if we go new game, you will notice this Hating is bigger than it was before. Planet Altair, the Shut up, Michael Alcar Dorn. Are an old race of avian hominids. Uh, I'm going to stop him talking there for Although a second. Although well because... known for their peaceful disposition, they are fierce in well, you know, combat. I'll just talk over him. And will uh, rarely yeah. back out of a fight if they You will notice in addition to the races we had caused. the first time, there the is Skyline now... rules over the flock. You know, I'm just gonna let him finish he because is the de facto commander he can't of shut him up. <laughs> and, uh, crewed by highly skilled and disciplined soldiers, their pilots are among the finest in the galaxy. Yes, we know what the Alkari are. Alkari religion Thanks, permeates Wolf. every aspect of their culture, and their zeal yeah, can there. oftentimes be confused with fanaticism. They All believe the, the god of sky chickens. created the Alkari to gaze over every horizon and have been driven into nice. space to fulfill that calling. Okay, thanks, bye. Right, okay, so... Yeah, in addition to the races you will have seen in the first playthrough, if you watched any of that, uh, you will notice there are three others. There are the Clackons, who are basically space insects, and they look suspiciously like the... Um, I can't remember the name of the race, but the uh, alien race of space insects in Ender's Game, if you've ever seen that film, which was based on a very good book. Uh, there's also the Mechlar, who are basically a race of sentient machines. They're an AI race, and they have more than a passing resemblance to the Geth from Mass Effect, which is understandable, because that was a really cool way of doing an AI race. And what we also have now, you will notice down there. You have humans up here, but you have the Terrans down here. You have the Terran Carnate. Now, the Terran Carnate is an extra race, which is actually a bonus you get for having the Collector's Edition, apparently. Um, so, yay me. But, they're just another race there, essentially. They're a bit cheeky as well here, because... Uh, well, they're called the Terran Carnate. They're based in Alpha Seti. And their leader is called Cohen, and they're essentially a brutal dictatorship. Basically, they're Khan's people from Star Trek II. If, essentially, if Khan had won and set up his own planet. And, yeah, their homeworld of Alpha Seti, which is in no way related to Seti Alpha. You, you get where they're going with this. And as someone pointed out, even the uniforms the that he wears human history looks that the age of the like the uniforms dawned. from Wrath of Khan. All over their homeworld, civil unrest was mounting as society crumbled under the weight of deviancy, corruption, and this background, and yeah, sounds an awful Mankind lot like the Wrath of Khan, of the Khan's background of the eugenics wars and stuff. But yeah, chaos and despair. When the, the other thing that's been added in this edition wrote, is custom races, which is awesome because you can then make your own race with all these custom options you have points built basically so for example if i take a 20 i have 80 points to spend and if i don't spend them obviously i get a score modifier if i take negative ones i get an even bigger score modifier 
So if I take a race, let's just rubbish at morale. Or I could take, you know, for example, a race that doesn't get any pollution. That's pretty cool. Uh, race of ships get closer to prones without being detected. Um, race not affected by high gravity. Race not affected by low gravity. Race not affected by low or high gravity. <coughs> start with a large home world. I can start with an ultra rich home world. I can start with artifacts for faster research. All sorts of options. Certain type races can transform. You know, these are all various variations on what the existing races have, but um, you can create your own custom race. The genetics, I think, is basically just to set what your character looks like and what your ships are based on. Uh, and you can name your leader something as well, but um, we're going to back off out of here because I have an existing game already in progress. And I'm just going to load into that game and show you a bit of uh, the game in its latest state. Uh, in addition to the extra races, uh, that's not all that's been changed. And the AI has been hugely improved as well. Uh, the enemy fleet, uh, well the enemy races build decent fleets to oppose you. Uh, they actually react much more sensibly to diplomatic liaisons and they will, uh, they'll they'll be open to trade negotiations. It me at this point or fears me because I've got to the stage where uh, oh yeah, this is another thing. Uh, you don't build jump gates on planets anymore. You build them on nodes uh, with improvement ships, which is I like that change because it gives you you know something more to build with your build ships other than just building defense platforms on the borders of your space. <coughs> and you can see there's nodes where all my jump gates are joined up. I've built jump gates all over the place because it makes getting around your empire a lot easier. Uh, I'm playing as the Bulrathi in this, the space bears, because space bears. I mean, why? what else do I need to say? Space bears. Um, I am currently... Uh, those of you who know the game will recognize the colony over here, Altair, as what was once the uh, Avioki homeworld, but... Uh, Avioki, uh, that's something from Babylon 5. Uh, the space chickens, basically. I, I conquered them a long time ago. There's my homeworld down here. This game actually started out really well because the first system I expanded to next door to me was this one. I didn't terraform those. That was three Terran planets in the neighboring system to me <coughs> with no other jump routes out of the system besides to my homeworld. That, that's a gift of a starting position there, and I exploited it very, very mercilessly. I colonized all three of those planets as quickly as possible and started churning out fleets, and uh, I'm actually playing the game on hard this time because I've, you know, I've got reasonably good at the game at this point, and I had a head start admittedly that I knew what I was doing to start with. I'm at war with the Mechlars at the moment, who are the Blue Empire over here. They've actually been spread out. The Mechlar did expand pretty aggressively and had a pretty impressive fleet and were actually a serious threat. And they were ahead of me. Uh, but I think I've, I've overtaken this point and caught up technologically and fleet building wise and just outproduced them basically and uh, started building titans and battleships and they just can't keep up with them anymore. My titans can just flatten them now. But yeah, the Rukabi system here was the edge of their territory originally, but I've uh, well, I bombed that colony to dust. There was nothing in there. Nothing in Herschel. I'm in the process of bombing out the practice system and conquering what's left of it. Uh, but yeah, they actually gave me the Rukabi colony uh, because they were terrified of my fleet at that point, and I said, you know what? I quite like Rukabi. Parked a massive fleet on their border and said, give it or I'll take it from you. And that's the thing. The AI, if they're scared enough of you, they will give in to demands, which is, I really like that. In a lot of games like this, uh, I mean, Civ 5 is a prime example. If you have an enormous army vastly superior to an AI race and you say, you know what, give me that city or I'll smash your face in, they'll go, no, smash my face in if you think you're hard enough, even though they're defending that city with like one archer against your 14 battleships and you could easily 
uh, enemies in this will go, you know what? If we go to war, I'm going to lose that system anyway, and I'm going to lose a bunch of ships defending it. I'll give in to that demand. It's the sensible option. You know, if you were playing a multiplayer game, and you were a vastly more powerful opponent said to you, I want that colony on your border. I just want the colony though. Give me the colony and I'll leave you alone. If you don't give it to me, I'm going to crush you and take it anyway. You're going to give them the colony. That's sensible. That is, you know, it's shotgun, it's saber rattling, it's battleship diplomacy, but that is how it works. That is the nature of Space Empire games, basically. Uh, okay, what do we got here? We have... The Mechler have still got some fleets around, though. Um, the Mechler did have a pretty impressive fleet, because the AI this time around, what they seem to be doing is they seem to build a lot more smaller ships, rather than trying to just build a few ships of the biggest class they can. So they'll build lots of destroyers and cruisers, and that actually seems a lot more viable now because of a change that's been made to the way the combat works, as you will see. Uh, formations are a thing now that actually matter, and lots of, you know, formations give big bonuses, and a big formation of small ships can do a lot of damage. So it is in your best interest to build not just, you know, a few massive cruisers, but, you know, a lot of little ships to go with them, and a, a good mixed fleet. Which is a good sign, because it means having these ridiculously high-tech frigates is not a bad option later on. Um, anyway, let's bomb Praxis, because we can. Uh, actually, I've already done that, so this is, I think we're actually at the end of the turn, so there's not actually anything else I can do at the moment, so... Yeah, okay. Let's end the turn. And, oh. That's the Clackons over here. Uh, the Clackons are in the middle of bombing the Mirshans to dust. Uh, the Mirshans were friendly with me at one point, but then the Mirshans formed an alliance with the um, Mechlars, and they both declared war on me together. And that was a bad idea on their part, because the Mechlar had the power to stand up to me, and I was actually worried about the Mechlar at that point. Uh, the Mirshans, though, um, basically, no. Bad kitty! No! And, well, put it this way, Bolcher Prime there, that was the edge of my space. Uh, I also colonized Brutum there, actually that, me colonizing Brutum was actually the tipping point that I think pushed the Mercians and the Mechlar into declaring war on me because that was the edge of Mercian space and that was a Mechlar colony and they were allied and they basically both said, you know, please stop colonizing space near me, we'd like to colonize this planet ourselves. And I said, uh, no, make me. And they said, all right then, we will, and declared war on me. And then I basically, well, that was a Mercian colony, that was a Mercian colony, that was a Mercian colony, so, and that was a Mechlar colony, so that worked out really great for them. Um... The Clackons are my allies at the moment. Uh, I'm in alliance with them, and the humans are also my allies. I didn't actually meet the humans later. Now the thing is, even though they're my allies, if you look at the diplomatic statuses, they don't like me very much. And neither do the Clackons. Uh, but they won't do anything about it because they are also terrified of me. If I wasn't, they're hostile because they're in an alliance, basically. Oddly enough, uh, if I wasn't allied with them, their status would actually be afraid because. They, they know I can kill them, basically. If I go to the Mercians, for example, they're afraid. Um, the reason they are all hostile to me, basically, is they pretty all believe I'm colonizing too fast. Um, which, they're basically right. They think I'm taking over the galaxy and I'm going to win. And the races in this react sensibly. If, if you're pulling away into the lead and getting into an unassailably powerful position, the other races will probably stop talking to you as much, and they won't cooperate as nicely. These guys are in an alliance, so they're a little more inclined to... They'll stay in the alliance, because they basically don't want to suffer my wrath, as it were. Uh, but yeah, let's talk to the Mercians. Welcome back, Bold I like the way they've animated. It's like, you can see, 
the character looks nervous because she's afraid of me. She's <laughs> she's a tiny little empire at this point, and the ships, you know, one of my titans or battleships even could probably destroy her entire fleet. I'm also way more advanced, so let's uh, let's go some negotiations. She'll pretty much give me whatever I want at this point, but uh, I would like graviton beams, please. If I must. See, she's scared out of her mind of me, so she will give me that tech because she just wants to keep me happy. Uh, I would like open borders as well. As you know, I, that's a two-way trade. I don't want to give her open borders. I think I'll let the Clackons wipe her out. Um, give me last of the prime. I must draw the line at okay, that. Yep. No, that's fair enough. I pushed that one too far. She won't give me the colony. She'll give me the other one. Nah. You know what? That's fine. I'm cool with that. I got my graviton beams out of there, which is a tech I don't have, so... Uh, let's have a chat with the humans. Let's skip the formalities. I have other business. Let's get this over with. You know what? Humans, would you like to declare war on the Mechlar? Gladly. Ah. Speak your mind, friend. You know what? They've agreed, so... I'm nice to let people like that. I am going to give you some tech. Because I'm going to keep you on I'm going to help you fight them. Uh, you can have Mega Fluxers. And you can have Plasma Cannons. It's always a pleasure doing business with you. Farewell, friend. To GNN, Galactic News Network. It is a dog-eat-dog -dog galaxy out there as the military might of the Human Republic battle against the Mechlar Combine for control of the galaxy. See, this is what I mean. Diplomacy works now. I had allies. I've asked. I've brought the humans into the war on my side, and that means. All of a sudden, the Mechlar have a war on two fronts. Let's have a look at the path to victory. It's a good judge of power, and the humans are actually almost a match for the Mechlar at the moment in military power. They're obviously, you know, you look at my military power, it's way out ahead, but the Mechlar were in the lead for most of the game. But if we look at the graph, because you can, and who doesn't like looking at a graph on a YouTube video? Shut up. Mechlar. You see, up until that point, they were winning. They they would you know it was neck and neck with us, and then they were pulling ahead for a while. And then I blew up some of their ships, and they've gone down a bit. They've lost some more ships, and I'm just way out ahead now. The humans, the humans are overtaking them. Well, they're starting to anyway. The Martians, the Clackons are pretty strong, but the Clackons are also my allies, so I'm not worried about them. So yeah, let's see what we've produced this turn. We will produce... Uh, what are they building? They can build a planetary stock exchange, a toxic processor to stop some pollution, and then a deep core mine because that gets them tons of production. And then they might as well do an advanced data center and then terraform the planet because I want to make it into a Terran planet because I can. Fleet needs orders. Uh, that cruiser could come back and join the fleet. I just sent them off to knock out a couple of ships that were trying to run. I'm not too worried about taking the other planets. I've already taken the good one, so I'm just going to bomb Praxis 3 to dust. They've also updated, you'll probably notice if you've watched my previous video, the uh, bombardment screen. You get a little more info here. All nice infographics for troops and armor. And... It just looks cooler.
do miss from the original Master Ruin. Well, no, I say the original. I missed from Master Ruin 2. Uh, the Maclas survived, though. They survived the bombardment. So, yeah. I'll have to bomb them for at least one more turn. Uh, you can see the Maclar are building up a reasonable little fleet over here of destroyers, but, um... I mean, it's not enough. They haven't got a chance. And the humans... have a pretty beastly fleet over here. Is there any destroyers, though? Is there any destroyers? Have they got a cruiser mixed in there? I oh, know, they've got a couple of cruisers. They'll be old tech, though, but, um... I don't know how much money the humans have, but if they've got enough money that they can upgrade those ships with the tech I just gave them, and that'll really help them out. Uh, the Mechlar. These things over here are troop ships. So I've got to be a little careful here, because if I give them a free run to any of my systems, they will just take my colony. Uh, all my actual core systems are defended with... Um, uh, blockade, blockade points, basically. They can't actually get in. But I'm a little worried they might be able to sneak around here, so I'm going to blockade that off as well. And I took out, recently, uh, the Orion system. Now, Orion is an amazing colony, but it's guarded by the Guardian. The Guardian is very dangerous. But, um... When you take the Guardian out, you get a whole bunch of tech. You get death rays, black hole generators, all sorts of fun stuff. So let's move everything on. And obviously you get the opportunity to colonize Orion. Orion is an amazing colony. It hasn't got anything special about it, but it's an ultra-rich, huge Gaia to start with, which is as good as planets get. Uh, I haven't actually built it up much yet, uh, because what I've basically done initially is build all the defense stuff on it, because I didn't want anyone taking it off me. So yeah, let's go to the next turn. What I'm trying to do here is get as far as uh, having a tactical combat, because the tactical combat is where the game has been hugely improved over the first patch, basically. Let's just finish this colony off. There we go. Praxis 3 has been bombed to extinction. Uh, oh, look, a ship. Auto-resolve. Kill it. No scout for you. And that's one of my other big fleets. You can see I'm not screwing around here, basically. Uh, they got a scout incoming there, but uh, I think I'm going to kill it on its way in. Uh, unfortunately for them, that's just, again, civil effectively non-combat ships like Trooper. If there's no combat ships there, you just auto-destroy them. In a mixed situation, when you've got combat ships and civilian ships, effectively, uh, you do actually have to have the civilian ships on the combat map now, so you have to watch out for them a bit, and, uh, you know, you can risk losing them. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Some things have completed building. Deep core mine, auto labs. Uh, then you can probably start building ships again, I think. Yep, you can build me a Titan then. No, actually, once you've built those, you can go back to exporting. I've turned that into a Gaia planet now, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, Menzo Prime. Menzo Prime has a thing on it which is a very useful gadget called. Um, where is it? Oh yeah, they've added this as well. You have a list of buildings on your building, so you don't have to scroll around and look at the manual. They're still all there, which is cool, but uh, you can find what you're looking for really easily now. And what I've got in here is this. Uh, where is it? It should have been around to it, but... Uh... Okay, apparently it doesn't.
Okay, it seems to, but if you have to scroll down too far... They don't all show up properly, seemingly. Okay, so, okay, there's still some teething problems, basically. But yeah, the Interplanetary Administration... No, no, it is there. It just uh, doesn't seem to go through properly for some reason. So, yeah, it's still bugged a little bit, but uh, it's a lot better than it was, as you can see. Uh, what it does, though, is it means uh, it allows you to manage the resources for a whole system rather than colonies. So if you build that on one of the planets, then the other planets in the system will have the option to export their production. Uh, what that means is, if I go to Mezzo 4 and put on production there, all its production will be exported. Uh, it'll do these first, because I've told it to do that. Uh, but then it'll start exporting all its, essentially, manufacturing capacity to Mezzo. So Mezzo basically gets a huge boost and all puts... It essentially allows you to use the resources from all three of these planets on one build project on there to build ships, for example. Uh, Mazo at the moment is building a Titan, but I'm actually going to cancel that because I want it to build a deep core mine and an auto lab first, and then go back to building Titans. And you know what? I don't really need that farmer there. You can stick one of those scientists on that build slot there, just to max out my production. Mezzo there is currently terraforming, so that will be terraformed from a desert in a minute. And once you've finished terraforming, you can build a deep core mine, and I think a weather controller, and an auto lab, and a toxin processor. So, yeah, that's it for everything's movement this turn. Yeah, no, as I, was, as I was saying, it's just a nice touch that they've added that option of diplomacy there. It's like, for example, seemingly, the humans have just somehow shot up to being friendly again. Which, I'm guessing they've just become friendly because I'm allied with them and they are at war with the same race as me now. So, you know, all of a sudden we're buddy-buddy again. Ah, welcome back. It's always a pleasure. Speak your mind, friend. Will they vote for me in the Galactic Senate? I just can't see that happening. Sorry. No, they're not going to do that because <laughs> they're not that stupid. If they vote for me in the Galactic Senate, with their votes and mine combined, I win the game. Straight up. So they don't like me that much yet. Farewell, friend. Um, let's send this Titan over there. Ah, there's a route between there. That's where they got away. Mm, I could probably go over here and bomb that planet out as well. Yeah, you know what? Screw them. We'll come back and deal with them in a minute. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get to a position where I can show you anyway, is the tactical combat. Because the tactical combat is vastly, vastly improved. Uh, I'm actually not worried about that scout. I can take him out with this destroyer. So I stop to fight with them, they lose their move, basically. And this fleet can go to Praxis 4. Ah, here we are. Here's a fight, so we can actually show you. So they've got, in orbit of Praxis 4, they've got defending a missile base, ground batteries, which actually all show up as little things in space. I kind of would have liked to see them firing from the planet, but I can see why they put them in the space stage sequence, so you can actually have you know, a valid space target. But, you know, it would have been nice to see the planet when you can shoot directly at the planet and see that cool effect and you before so I didn't notice if the planet actually looks like the planet in question so I've never really thought to actually look at that so let's let's watch in this battle and see if Praxis 4 in fact looks like this in the game in the battle in the battle
Uh, I've got here, obviously, a Titan, a battleship, a couple of cruisers, and a whole bunch of advanced destroyers. We're going to mop the floor with them, but... Uh, Yeah, the planet looks appropriate. I like that. I hadn't noticed that before, but... Uh... Okay, so, a few things have changed. First of all, there's the option. It's an option you can toggle on the thing, but... Um, by default, the space battles start pause now, which means you have a chance to have a look around and... set some orders. Um, you will notice there's a whole bunch more stuff going on over here now. First of all, there's a retreat option. Um, not entirely sure how it works. I already tried to use it once and it didn't let me retreat, but I think basically when you pull your ships back off the edge, you have the option of clicking that in certain situations and jumping out. You can't always do it, and I'm not sure what the rules are on when you can and can't do it, but um, formations also. Um, you have the option here of setting an engagement range, so I can set my ship to engage. You know, it'll try and keep the range between these two points, basically. If the ship's closer than that, it'll try to break open the distance. You know, for example, if I wanted, a, if I had a little frigate with missiles and I wanted to stay at long range, I'd set it like this. It would try and keep the range at long. But you know what? I'm fine with the default there. You can also set the speed for your ship. By default, it's on maximum, but um, you can slow some ships down. So, for example, if I wanted to send them all in and have my frigates hang back at long range, I could set the frigates to you know long range on that and slow speed there. As it happens, what I tend to do is use this one which sets match speeds on which means my cruisers and my destroyers will be slowed down you see so they won't outrun the battleship or the titan uh, the other thing you'll notice here is the formations now these were in the game before but they didn't actually do anything um, now if i have them in a line formation you see plus to beam accuracy and the weapon cooldown is lowered as well uh, or I could do a wedge, which is more aggressive, you get more beam accuracy and more ship speed. Uh, or I could do a circle formation, which will give them big bonus to point defense accuracy and a big bonus to beam defense. Or a square formation, which is the other way around, basically. Uh, I'm actually going to put them in circle. And I'm going to put these in circle as well, because I want more point defense accuracy so I can shoot down the missiles as they come in. Uh, my cruisers, I am absolutely fine with being in that mode there, better weapon shooting, better weapon shooting, better weapon shooting. And that'll do. I'm happy for the ships to just go in and engage now. You see my ships moving into their formations. You can see, obviously, these guys are slowing down. They could outrun the rest of the ships, but they are keeping pace with my big cruisers. Obviously we've got cinematic camera still. Titan going in, my destroyers. There's their ground batteries, I think. I haven't actually noticed if they have different languages on those. I have to pay attention to that as well sometimes. That's another thing I'd like to see added in future releases, is at the moment the space stations are all generic of mech color. I would very much like to see different faction designs for space station stuff like they have with the ships. Uh, I'd like to see more options for ship designs as well, but... Uh, so their point defense is shooting my missiles down. But if you notice, none of their missiles are getting through. You can see over there, that's heavy fighters which are coming off my battleships. And there go the big guns, my big cruisers. Pulse off missiles. All my ion beams and death rays. These aren't my best ships by a long way. These are actually fairly old tech ships by my standards. But they're more than a match for the fleet I'm dealing with. And then we will bomb Praxis 4 to dust, I think. Not bad. 
more trans bombardment, which will see the end of that colony as well. And they are happily sat there. I'm going to bring them up here, I think. And these guys can come up here as well. And... Oh, excuse me. It's been a long day. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's where Master of Orion 2 is at at the moment. Uh, they've, As you can see, they've improved the diplomacy, they've improved the AI, um, they've hugely improved the tactical combat. It doesn't look like much from that, but uh, believe me, it makes a big difference having those formations and those pause options. Uh, and the speed and the ranges and everything just... It feels like you're actually making a difference in the tactical combat now what you do, uh, rather than just, you know, literally having it as a glorified cinematic, which is basically what it was last time. It was basically the same as clicking auto-calculate. It's just, you know, it looked prettier. And, you know, honestly, I'm not that fussed because, honestly, the tactical combat element for me was never the crux of Master of Orion. It was part of it, obviously, but really the game is about empire management, building your fleets and having the tech. Uh, it's nice to see the fleets in combat, because then you can see what all your cool tech does. But, you know, and there's something very satisfying when you engage someone with vastly superior tech, and you send, like, a frigate or something in, and your frigate is so advanced that it just obliterates their battleship or something. Um, I haven't tried that at this point, but I, I did take out, like, a earlier on in the game, I can't remember, I think it was an Al the Alkari when I was fighting them right near, it was relatively early, but my tech was way ahead of theirs, and they had, you know, a couple of cruisers, and I sent three frigates in, and my frigates ate them, and they couldn't get through my shields. And that's satisfying. Uh, the Clacons are, yeah, moving in pretty hard here. I think the Clacons are probably going to wipe the Mercians out. Part of me wants to step in and stop them. But there's no... That's another thing I'd like to see added to the diplomacy options. Uh, you can ask people to declare war. You can't ask them to break things off, or to make peace with people, or, you know, to call off an attack. I would like to see those options expanded on. I would like to see the ability to go, you know, uh, hey, guys, you're, you're my allies. Um, I actually quite like the Mercians, and we're trading with them. Uh, could you please not murder them all? You know, they'd probably tell me where to stick it at that point. And quite rightly. A little bit nice option. Uh, anyway, though, yeah, that's Master of Orion 2 as it's... Uh, sorry, Master of Orion... Well, I suppose this is technically Master of Orion 4. But that is where the game is at at the moment. Uh, it's a big improvement on where it was in this one. Um, if you go onto the official site as well, they've got a big list of, like, sort of developer responses, essentially, to feedback from the community. And this is what has really encouraged me more than anything else with this game, is that post is essentially all the thing people who have been criticising the game initially. First of all, I think all the people who are criticising the game are nuts, because they clearly don't understand the concept of what early access is for. And, you know, I've heard a lot of people complaining, oh, the game's not finished, there's so much stuff that needs broken and needs repairing. Yeah, that's because the game isn't finished, and there's a lot of stuff that needs repairing. That's why it's an early access, so they can identify those areas and fix them. Now, I can understand some people's reaction to that, because a lot of companies use early access not for those purposes. They use it to just get a bunch of money early, and then they don't actually fix the problems. That's just the game you're going to get with a few little bits of polish here and there. But basically, the actual game, once it hits early access, is the game you're going to be playing at release. Um, that doesn't seem to be the case here, which I'm really relieved of on, uh, and really glad that uh, Wargaming seemed to be very much, you know, trying to make the game people want. They are listening to the criticisms, uh, the valid ones, that is, not the people just ranting, but the people are actually saying, you know what, but tactical combat at the moment is a little bit uninvolved. Um, I'd like to see some more options. I'd like to see, you know, me have more of a direct impact on the result of the battles if I take direct command. Um, 
diplomacy AI needs a bit of work, the AI just tends to go, screw you, human, I'm not going to talk to you, and war, war, war. Um, but yeah, they are, all those posts basically say, you know, yep, we see all that, we agree with all that, we're working on it, we're going to do this, 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 and this, we're going to add, improve here, we're going to work on the diplomacy AI, we're going to add a whole bunch of new features, we're going to improve this, they're just adding tons of stuff that basically makes this a better game. And it's slowly but steadily turning into, I mean, it's already a fantastic game, but it's slowly but steadily turning into a game that's not only as good as Mars of Orion 2, but better. And just the, already it's, I think it's actually already got to the point where I'm actually enjoying this as much as I used to enjoy Mars of Orion 2. And it's basically well on course to be the best strategy game I've ever played. If they keep improving it the way they're improving it at the moment, by the time this releases, it's going to blow every all the competition away, including Civ V and including even the original Mass of Orion, I think. And that's about as high a praise as I can give for a game of this nature. I, I can I can see where some of the critics are coming from. There are still some things and some decisions I, I disagree with. Um... I wish they'd kept the original tech system from Master of Orion 2, where you would research areas and then pick a text from that area, rather than, you know, going on a tech tree as such. I think it's a shame they just sort of, you know, copped out and went with the Civ-style tech tree. It was part of Master of Orion's charm, the way they did technology. Um, but at the same time, I can see the tech tree is a lot more accessible to people who haven't played the originals. It's certainly not easy to see what you're getting you don't need, and it's certainly a lot easier to plan ahead because you don't, you know, in the way they were done, you couldn't see what was coming on through. You just have to choose, do I want to improve my research in propulsion or do I want to improve my research in energy weapons? Excuse me, my phone's pinging there for me. Um, but, oh, speaking of tech, let's have a look. Uh, tech. The scrutineers are sniffing for secrets as we speak. You're as you will see, they have improved the icons a bit, but has shuffled a few techs around, but it's basically the same tech tree as it was before. One thing they have added, though, is scientific victory is now an option. You can win by essentially tech transcendence becoming... Yeah. Super, super, super techy, basically. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, there's that option there. Um... I'd have, I'd have preferred the original tech system from Master Round 2. I, I think the tech tree is its perfectly adequate, and it does the job, but I just think it takes a little bit away from what made Master of Orion unique and makes it a bit more like just any other 4X game. And that's a shame, but I can understand why they did it. Oh, hello, the humans are getting... And at the same time, we've got, uh, so yeah, the tech tree. And they also, the other big change between the original Master and one thing that's really annoyed some of the old sort of diehard fans of the original, and again, I can see where they're coming from. It doesn't bother me personally, but I can see why, and I can see why they changed it. The original Master Ryan didn't have these star lines between systems, which are set hyperspace routes. You could basically go anywhere. Uh, if I had a ship there, I could fly to any system directly. But the way it worked is you had range. You had a second thing for like fuel types, like iridium fuel cells and that. And that the, as you gradually expanded, your the range from one of your colonies or star bases expanded, and that was how far you could fly. That also you know set up the borders of your space. Say, initially, I would be able to reach Rabe, Bulcher, and Zyam from Ursa there. Uh, and, you know, I'd be able to get to any system within six light years, for example, and then I'd research better fuel cells and I'd be able to get to within ten light years. Uh, you could obviously, buy, if I built a colony there, I'd be able to then get to any system within X light years of that as well. But the way they've done that with Star Alliance is essentially your ships have unlimited range, which kind of makes sense. If you've got the technology to go, it's just a matter of time, obviously, to get places. And the travel speed is a much bigger deal than the actual travel distance. Um, there's these unstable hyperspace nodes, which tend to sort of section off areas of the galaxy and stop you just going wherever you like. Oh, hello, there's a... no. 
Uh, there was a bunch of balance changes as well to the game. Um, in particular, they made it so, you know, the colour of the stars would affect the biomes a lot more. So if you find a yellow system, for example, with a yellow star, you're much more likely to get a system like this with loads of Terran planets in and things. Um, but yeah, overall, big improvement. The game is well on course to be a true classic. And yeah, I hope that gave you guys a bit of more of a peek into what it's like. Um, as I've said before, this is a little video. I was just doing, well, I say a little video. It's turned into a couple of hours again. Uh, surprise, surprise. Uh, but it should give you a bit of a feed for what the game is like now. I'm probably going to do another video like this when essentially the Wave 3 patch rolls around, just so you can see what's changed again, and hopefully they'll have added in espionage and the other two races. Um, and, you know, I'm still hopeful they'll add a few more options to diplomacy. I'm, I would like to see more done with the Galactic Council as well. At the moment, the Galactic Council, you vote uh, for who will be the Galactic Chancellor. If you get elected Chancellor, you win the game. That's fine. But I'd like to see the option of some other things in there as well. Or, for example, maybe not have it win the game. Uh, maybe have a Galactic vote every few years on smaller matters, like, say, the option to ban... Uh, the use of bioterminators, or to impose trade sanctions on a particular empire or something, or, you know, things like that, that uh, allow you to enact ordinances and galactic laws that will just basically make things more interesting. Make the council do something besides just vote for winning the game. Um... Yeah, there it is, really. <laughs> Let's build some uh, things here. But yeah, I'm going to call that here, and I will probably see you guys in another video when we uh, get the next update to the game out, and I'm going to do a proper playthrough for a full game, start to finish. Uh, it's going to be a, a marathon of a game session, of a sort of video series, uh, but, you know, some people like watch, I mean, I've watched people play this sort of games myself, I guess, so, uh, which probably says a lot about how much of a boring bugger I am, but, uh, we will see. Uh, when the game actually goes into open release and is actually finished, I'm going to do... I'll properly review the game at that state, obviously. And I will do an actual playthrough from start to finish with, you know, whatever race takes my fancy at the time. Probably the, uh, probably the Volrathi. I actually really like the Volrathi. I, I always used to play Cylons and muss around because I just... Well, I was a lot younger then and I just basically thought creative was sort of easy mode and it was like cheating almost and it was just made the game easier now I'm a bit older uh, well I'm a lot older <laughs> that's not kid uh, I like a challenge a bit more and I like the Bullrathi and I just like the character of the Bullrathi the whole sort of big Russian space bears is sort of I find it quite fun so uh, oh you know what Nice colony. Shame if anything happened to it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I will. Uh, I've been Lakutus. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, if you have and you want to see more, let me know. Um, if you want me to do a playthrough in the meantime before release, then uh, let me know as well, and I will probably get going on that. I, I Lord knows I don't need much incentive to play Master of Ryan, and it's not really much effort on my part to talk a load of bollocks while I'm playing it. Uh, I can't imagine it's going to be all that entertaining for anyone besides myself, but uh, if anyone actually wants me to do that, do say, and it shall be so. It probably shall be so anyway, because let's not kid. No one cares whether I do this or not. I do it for fun. Bombs away! Where's the little buggers, aren't they? Oh, we finished We've learned a new trick! Thanks to our scrutineers. Uh, Doomstars. Yes, we want Doomstars. Our transmissions on all our planets at this point because we're that advanced that I've now reached the stage where my civilization is dedicated at this point not to producing massive fleets 
or defense structures. We're just basically turning all our colonies into Star Trek-like paradise planets, basically. Clackons are looking pretty big there, actually. I might have to... Let's have a little chat with them, I think. They don't look like they're worried anymore. Why do you call on the hive? We hear you. Trade deal. We refuse. Oh. We what require want to... no ha! less than this. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, that is one thing I think the game still needs to improve the diplomacy on. Uh, if you ask them what will it take to make this deal work, and almost invariably they will basically demand absolutely ridiculous things like, oh, I want half your colonies, and no, the Clackons don't want to talk to me, so screw the Clackons. Uh, yeah, sorry, I was actually finishing this video, so yeah, uh, I will see you guys next time. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, like and subscribe, please, and uh, do hit the thumbs up, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Cheers! <laughs>